Welcome back inside the Now Morning Show. We head across to Tobago. It is Tobago Thursday and Natalie has your spotlight on now. Thank you very much, Rokas. And in today's spotlight, we have the representative, the candidate for Lambo Lowlands, Mr. Leroy George. And he is a member of the Innovative Democratic Alliance. The campaign trail, as I said, is definitely heating up. And what we're trying to do is to talk to candidates from each of the political parties vying the, uh, for the December 6th election just to hear what they have to offer to the people. So let me just pause and say good morning to you, Mr. George. Good morning. How are you? I am good. How are you? I'm very good. First time, first time throwing your hat into the political ring? Yes, this is my first time contesting at THC or any election. And how has the experience been thus far? A lot easier than one would have expected. Oh, wow. So this is interesting. <laughs> Tell me what makes it easy, yeah. my dear. Well, the political climate is really charged and divisive at this time. However, being a member of the idea, it's mainly charged between the PNM and the PDP because there's been quite a bit of mud slinging. And so the idea provides a bit of relief from that. So when persons see you on the canvassing trail, when persons see you campaigning, et cetera, it's, there's not that much animosity taking place, even though we're considered just as serious as the other two. Okay, so for the idea, what is the campaign strategy then? Because it's not as if you're saying to the people, well, this is what we've done so far, this is the experience. What is the campaign strategy for Mr. George when he meets and greets the people? Well, actually, experience is one of our strong points because while one of the other two political parties does not have anyone that would have served as a secretary or a con well, they had councillors and assemblymen, but none that actually served in the THA executive at any point. We, on the other hand, our political leader is considered the most experienced of all the former THA executives that is still on the political landscape today. And so that's one of the main things that we remind persons of because a lot of persons are concerned about the lack of experience of one of the political parties and a lot of persons are concerned about the apparent lack of transparency and consultation happening with the other parties. So we do provide a balance that cannot be found elsewhere. So, so the experience of Joel Jack, Ansel Dennis, Tracy Davids, Celestine, Nadia Phillips, uh, uh, was the Secretary of Education, that's not like enough experience in, in the THA? Right. None of those individuals you mentioned could be compared to Dr. Denise Soyapat Angus in terms of experience, because when you're talking about Dr. Angus, you're talking about somebody that didn't just serve as a counselor, but also as a presiding officer. So that person knows the runnings of the THA House of Assembly more intricately than any of those persons you spoke about. She served as a secretary. Um, she also served as a counselor for the Secretary of Health at one point. And she's held way more positions. She was the public relations officer for the PNM before she separated from them. So yes, she is more experienced than all those persons that you made mention of. Okay, so what is it that Leroy Jar George plans to bring to the people of Lambo Lowlands if he's successful at the polls on December 6th? There are a couple of things I, I expect to bring to the political landscape, especially here in Lambo Lowlands, to the representation. First off, uh, a bit more respect than what they are accustomed to. There is a social contract that exists between representatives and those that they represent. And if you were to come to Lambo Lowlands, especially the Canby Lowlands area, you'd, you'd understand that that social contract isn't being respected as much because some of the basic needs that are commonly held by the entire community are grossly neglected, most specifically roads and drains, et cetera. And so one of the things I intend to do is to be on site every single day throughout my entire term not just be on site making sure that the job gets done with my eyes and my mouth, but even physically doing the work sometimes in order to set a pace. Because while I am well known as an academic and someone that is hard working, I, not a lot of people know it, but also when it comes to physical work, I'm the kind of person that could actually set a pace. And I think 
there is a work ethic issue in the government sector here in Tobago, and that's something I want to address in particular. Also, I'm keenly aware because I spent the last um, couple of years of my life working as a research officer. I'm keenly aware of what can and what cannot be done by an assemblyman and what can and what cannot be done by the Tobago House of Assembly in general, since I have been researching more specifically politics and history and that type of stuff here in Tobago. And so as a result of that, we're seeing a lot of usurping of the authority that is usually given or supposed to be given to Tobagonians or to the Tobago House of Assembly rather through um, Act 40 of 1996, the fifth schedule to two responsibilities. And as a result of that, that abdicating of authority to central government that we're seeing on a regular basis, that isn't going to be happening underneath me. Tell or me specifically, me, Mr. Uh, George, tell me specifically how you think the THA has been uh, usurping its authority or the, the central, central government has been you know, usurping the authority of the THA. How, how do you think that is playing out right now and what is it that you're going to change if you're successful? Okay, um, just one of many ways that they've been usurping their authority. If you look at the fifth schedule of Act 40, the 33 responsibilities, one of them is education and the persons that would have written that the constitution, that segment of the constitution, they were very careful to put next to education in open and closed brackets curriculum. And as a result of that, they empowered the people, the officials in the Tobago House of Assembly to create an education system that is Tobago centric and creates pride and enfranchisement. And what we're seeing is that that isn't happening as a matter of fact, or if we have to be very brutally honest, Tobago is lagging behind Trinidad where education is concerned. And we're certainly lagging behind Trinidad and Trinidad isn't even doing that well when it comes to education that is specifically geared to your people. Mm. Is there That's anything? One. Is there anything you can pinpoint at this time that you think is going right within the THA or even with the central government, you know, that you can see the people of Tobago have benefited from? Well, one of the things that, that went right is that now that we have three large political parties in the, on the Tobago space or in the Tobago space, you're getting more respect for the electorate. When there was only two, well, even before that, there was only one because at one point, the Tobago arm of the People's National Movement had all 12 seats when it was 12 seats. And when that was happening, there was very little consultation going on. There was very little transparency going on. It was, it was really a nightmare. And then when there was two, it, it, there was kind of a spirit of it's either us or them. So if you're not satisfied with us, what are you going to do about it? Now that there are three large parties, I'm seeing an improvement in the way that government officials deal with the people, the way that they treat the people, they're starting to treat the people a little bit more as if the people were their employers because the people are their employers, they're acknowledging that fact a little bit more than they would have before or they would if we were not around. It's funny that you say that because the system that you describe and talk about, at one point your political leader was presiding officer over that. So at this yes. point, can you say that her leadership is going to be any different from what we've seen before? She was a huge part of it, and for a good while too. Yes, she was. She was, um, she was the presiding officer, and that's when she came to my attention. At that time, I was associated with um, the minority council side of the political landscape, and I observed her and how she would conduct herself during THA sittings. At that time, as I say, it was very mischievous and the ruling THA executive, the assemblymen and the councillors, etc., they would ridicule the minority council when they're giving their presentations and she always would stand up for them. And I said to myself, this is a lady that takes her job seriously and understands that she needs to put the seriousness of her job in front of her political affiliation. And that's that's one of the many things that really brought me closer to her and admiring her so that as things evolved more and I discovered that there were some issues within my political party, I felt as though, well, this is somebody I could gravitate to without feeling betrayed or as if I had put my faith in someone that um, I should not have. 
But again, let me play devil's adv advocate. The reality is not that Denise Sawyer at Angus decided that something was wrong with the PNM, so she wanted to try something else. Is that Denise Sawyer at Angus did not get the nod of the people and then decided that as she wasn't chosen as a candidate, that she was going to do something else. So really, are we going to get any kind of difference to what we saw uh, from her when she was a part of the PNM? I don't know that her thinking has changed. I think it's just circumstances okay. that made it her form a political party. It is very important when we say in reality that the thing that comes out of our mouth immediately after be factual. The truth of the matter is that she did get the nod of the people. She got the nod of the people in the Tobago Council of the PNM, both in 2016 to contest the 2017 election, and then she got the nod of the people again in 2019 to in 2020 rather to contest the January 2021 election. She did win. When the members of that party came together to vote, she did win in both cases. However, because the landscape was as the landscape is, the political leader in both cases was able to override the decision of the people. And that is why she wasn't able to represent. Um, I think also we need to remember also that she held very high offices and she in voluntarily relieved herself of the position of presiding officer. No one took that away from her, nor was there any indication that anyone was intending to take that away from her. So she has shown that she's willing to make sacrifices for the things that she stands for. Uh, that's my understanding of reality. But of course, you could um, continue um, explaining why your understanding is different from mine. Well, if you say that my understanding of what happened is different to yours, then no problem, because it seems as if we're going to be playing semantics between. We have a system in place where there's a screening committee for a political party, and we've seen it before where if you want to say that the people gave her the nod, but the, 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 the political party did not give her the nod, I don't know that is so different. She did not represent the people's national movement at the 2021 January elections. She did not get the nod. Okay, well, if you would give the um, priority to the screening committee, meaning to say that democracy lies more in the hands of the screening committee than the people itself, well, I'll have to um, disagree with you. Well, I would like to know why would somebody would be a part of a political party where there's a system in place. Always observe the system, but once it doesn't work for you, then something is wrong with the system. Well, I would, I would believe that she would have always stood up and, and I've seen that she always stood up for what was right, even while she was within that political system long before any of these things happened. And I would even go as far as to suspect that the reason why she was not chosen, even when the people would have chosen her continuously and overwhelmingly, is because she is someone that would stand up for what is right. That, that's, that's a very interesting statement. But you say you plan to, yes. treat, to treat with the, the people if you get the nod on uh, December 6th and that you want to ensure that you're on the out treating with the people, meeting and greeting with the people every single day. How are you going to be able to do that if you really understand what it means to hold office? When you have parliament sittings, when you have committees, when you have to meet with the assembly, how, how do you plan to balance all of that? Okay. So first off, you have to understand who the boss is. The boss is the people, therefore you answer to the people first and foremost. While I've been on the campaign trail earlier on, you asked me if it was difficult. Well, you didn't ask me if it was difficult. You asked me how has the campaign trail been, and I told you it was easy. I'm not in the habit of doing things today that I would not be able to maintain tomorrow. I've been on the ground every day for several hours. And I thought it was going to be strenuous because I have to be talking to like literally hundreds of people every single day. But what I discovered is that I actually love it. And that's why it's so easy. I actually love getting the perspectives of all the different persons learning about the lives of the people learning about my electoral district. So that's something I intend to continue doing. And because I'm continuing in consultation at all times, I will always have a plan that is consistent with the needs and wants of the people around me. So that's how I intend to, to go about my business. All right, Mr. George, uh, I, I wish you all the best on December 6th. Thank you so much for sharing with us this morning. Thank you also for having me. You're most welcome. Leroy George, their uh, candidate for Lambo Lowlands of the Innovative Democratic Alliance.